Hello Internet, Ray Sweaty Hewlett here with another Burn and Learn for you straight off the torture machine today and I'm um, going to share some quantum computing insights with you today because that's what I've been looking at. Burn and Learn, for those of you who don't know, is my bit to stay alive and fit long enough to raise my amazing son who is still homesick, doing a bit of homeschooling with him of late and uh, enjoy the twilight years with my beautiful, brilliant wife, Jane. I hate exercise, it's boring, so I like to learn something while I'm doing it and then I like to share what I've learned with you in the sweatiest way possible, something I am certainly doing today. So I'm going to look this up because I can never remember the name of it. So the Future Maker Talks, the Reality of Quantum Computing at the RBC Waterfront Place, or whatever it's called. Um, this is a series of lectures that RBC, I guess, is doing, and it just really struck my um, struck my fancy. So I thought I would go to that, but then I thought, oh my god, if I'm going to go to that, I should, I should brush up on the tiny, tiny amount of information I know about uh, quantum computing and quantum mechanics and all that kind of stuff. So I definitely, this is scratching the surface. It may not even be scratching the surface, this may just be uh, amusing myself Myself with a with a, a, a very very base knowledge of this stuff, but I'll tell you, um, I've been using a series of videos from the channel Extra Credits, which I I have I used to watch years and years ago. Um, uh, I you know they were doing a lot of sort of video game related stuff and video game programming and stuff, but they've now sort of expanded into this amazing selection of stuff, very much like Crash Course. Um, but they have one on quantum computing, strangely in their history section. But I I watched that and it was amazing, like just mind-blowingly amazing. In fact, Sebastian, uh, my son and I were, were experimenting with the light going through the two slits and seeing how it acts like a wave, even though it's been sort of proven to be a particle in other, in other forms. The thing that really got me was the idea that there was, um, uh, that if you, if you detect which slit the uh, photon has gone through, it will start acting like you would think a particle wouldn't. It would actually change the, the way the the, uh, the photons hit the wall behind it. It's just, I mean, again, I'm, I'm not doing this justice, but it's, it's just extraordinarily satisfying to even just get a sense of this stuff. Um, the other one that I love was the best described, um, the best description of quantum computing, which I, I think was, a, was, a, was a, an IBM one, I think, but I'll, I'll put it in the links below. Um, I actually created a playlist uh, last night for today's burn and learn um, because of that that book that mind for numbers book talking about planning ahead uh, I thought oh that would be so much more convenient if I just had a, a playlist that I could then look at while I'm exercising instead of, sort of fumbling to find this stuff um, and adding to the time it takes me to do my exercise so I did that today and it was incredibly useful and I'm thinking maybe I should share these playlists with you so if you were so inclined you could also do some exercise and, and do some burn and learn as well or you know just sit back and learn some stuff um, although write it down if you don't write it down it doesn't lock in that's the other thing I find uh, uh, a definite truth from the stuff that I've got uh, in my learning to learn stuff so um, uh, but this IBM uh, uh, video I believe it's IBM you know, pardon me if I'm wrong, I will put, a, as I say, a link. Um, but this fantastic uh, woman talks about how uh, quantum computing works on various different age groups. So how, explains it to different age groups. In fact, now I say it, I believe it was actually a Wired article. Um, but the one that really got me, of course, was to the kids, where she talked about how uh, with computers you have zeros and ones, and let's replace those with a coin, so it's heads or tails. Whereas quantum computing, you have those heads and tails are actually spinning. So you're spinning the coins. So I have this, this wonderful image of, of multiple spinning coins as the possibilities of ones and zeros instead of the concrete ones and zeros that we're used to using and how that exponentially um, increases the, the processing power and, and memory available to people. So just, again, I am not doing this justice. I just want to get a tiny stupid, <laughs> stupidly simple uh, concept of this stuff in my head. And it was, um, it was a wonderful burn and learn. And uh, uh, one that actually started earlier today um, with my son, because we were watching some YouTube. And I said, if he was at home, he had to watch something educational. So I said, look, I got to watch this quantum stuff. We started watching that. He was bored out of his mind, but he did learn some things. And I think, I th well, I think there may be a little spark of interest there. We'll see. So until we geek again, sweaty or not, here I come. Cheerio! Oh,